Hello, blessings, and welcome to The Power of Slow. The Power of Slow. Now, that's a topic in the modern world that's almost in bad taste because everybody thinks, well, I want to be more efficient. I want to get there quicker. I want to do more. So the concept of slow is a little bit new for many modern people. But you will notice there is something called the slow food movement. And the slow food movement is based on the idea that if you enjoy your food, you enjoy the cooking of it, if you are present in each moment, if you take a breath instead of rushing through the meal, you get a higher quality experience. Now, there's something to that, and there's something to that that we are going to be playing with this evening. Not the food aspect, but the aspect of how can we be more present. Now, in order to do that, we are going to be exploring what is it that makes our brain leap from topic to topic so quickly so that we do not experience what is happening in between the moments. Now, one of the things that people are always told when they are embarking upon a study of spirituality or meditation or anything of that nature, they're always told to slow down and get into the moment, but they are not specifically told necessarily how to do that exactly. We are going to be exploring how your body and brain and soul function, and we are going to be getting inside the moments. So we are going inside the space that ordinarily your brain leaps over. Now, the first thing we're going to explore this evening, tune into your body. Tune into the space between the top of your head and the soles of your feet. Now, breathe into that space and breathe out of that space and be present there. Now, between the top of your head and the soles of your feet, sweep your consciousness. Now, sweeping is something that we are going to be doing quite a bit this evening. So to start, get a sense of the top of your head and just notice that. And then sweep down with your awareness. Sweep through your head, through your neck, shoulders and arms. And notice that there is space. There is a place there. You can sweep your consciousness through these parts of your body. Now, when you do that, they start to come online. They start to awaken. And you start to awaken to the fact that these aspects of you are here. It's almost as if you become more real. You become more richly present in all your senses. Everything becomes more three-dimensional. So sweep through your chest, through your spine. Sweep with your awareness through your hips, legs, and feet. So from your head to your toes, your consciousness is able to sweep through that space, and that gives more reality to that space. Now, just imagine that there's a clock. You might actually have a clock there, and that will help you visualize. But even if you don't, just get a sense of a clock and get a sense that it has a second hand. And just for fun, imagine that the second hand on that clock is fixed. It's moving so exquisitely slowly that the space between one second and another allows you to take a breath. Now, just imaging this in your mind actually changes your consciousness. So play with that for a moment. You have the ability. You proved that you could sweep your consciousness through your body. Now do the same thing, but the clock is moving exquisitely slowly, and you are sweeping through your body with your consciousness. Now notice what happens to the texture of your body. Notice what starts to happen to your mind, to your senses. 
your five senses. Notice how things look and feel and sound when you are sweeping through your body and the clock is moving exquisitely slowly. So the first thing you might notice is that there is a beautiful tingling vibration and that is the prana or chi within you. Now, of course, it is always there, but it is easier to notice now. Now, the clock is still moving exquisitely slowly, and so you might detect as you experience the slowness of that clock that you are you, you are in your body. You are in the room that you are in, And it's going to start to feel or look slightly different if it doesn't already. Now, of course, the room itself has not changed, but you yourself are more present. Now, when you start to experience that room, you are experiencing the moments between the moments. Now, those moments, of course, have always been there, but your mind was skipping so quickly And let's talk about that skipping mind. What we are talking about when we refer to the mind that jumps from thing to thing, that is the logical mind, also called the left brain. And what it is doing is taking almost a shorthand version of reality. It's looking at this object and that object and this person and that person and this activity and that activity. And it's leaping from one to the other because it's looking at tasks and it's looking at how do I efficiently and quickly do this task and solve this problem. Now, of course, a certain amount of that is valid and is vital to your well-being. But when it takes control, the richness and depth goes missing. And so we are reacquiring the richness that got lost amidst the daily tasks. Now, let's explore even more deeply. And the way we're going to do that, get a sense of that slow clock and look at the second hand and imagine that it's moving normally now. And notice how you can breathe into your body and you can be present as the second hand is slowly moving from second to second to second. Now, Just pretend you reach out and you move the second hand backwards just a few seconds as if you are now going to re-experience some moments. And so reach out with your hand, move the second hand on the clock backwards a few moments, and then re-experience those seconds. And then reach out again and move the second hand backwards a few seconds and re-experience again. Okay, good. Now this is interesting because what happened to your auras when you did that, when you re-experienced time several times, everybody got really bright and very focused. So there's something about this that frees you to be yourself. It frees you to realize that you can live more richly and more deeply and you have more control now of something that was seemingly out of control before. In doing that, it released a lot of stagnant energy. And so with your energy hands, let yourself imagine that you are lifting stagnant patterns right out of your space and let them go. Just lift them out and let them go. Okay, we had a question. What happens if you do this technique that we just did and there's a feeling of being wired like being on coffee? Now, let's understand how unfamiliar these states are and why the wired feeling would show up. One of the reasons for this is that usually 
we are perceiving, let's say, the percentage of our world that we can perceive. Now, what happens when you go really deep at first is that you are getting sensory data that is so deep and so rich and so multi-layered. And what happens with that can feel, especially to the parts of your mind that are not used to all that sensory data, like an overload. And so we will bear this in mind. We just had a question about ADD, which stands for Attention Deficient Disorder, and whether there is some kind of connection between that situation for the people who experience it, and is it related to what we're talking about here? Not being an expert in that field, I can only assume that there is a connection, and here's how. When a person is jumping from topic to topic and they are not having a deep, rich experience, maybe that's what ADD is, but maybe the missing component is learning how to slow down time and learning how to be more present in every rich moment. To continue, we are going to talk about how to use your multi-senses in order to experience the rich slowness of deep reality. The first thing we're going to explore, and you've already explored it a bit because you are sweeping with your consciousness through your body. Now, when you sweep with your consciousness, consciousness, in a sense, is everywhere or can be everywhere. And there are wonderful choices that you can make with your consciousness that give you a sense that you exist in time and space and it gives you a sense that you have a greater sense of control than you had realized. So what I ask you to do now, in the same way that you are sweeping through your body with your consciousness, tune into the space around you and begin to slowly and methodically sweep your consciousness. Now here's how you might envision that. Imagine that your aura is made of fibers of light. Imagine that they can extend from your body out into the world. So the fibers of attention are extending out. And in the same way that you could extend your fingertips out into the world and sweep your hand through the room. Imagine that you are sweeping fibers of attention You could even have them extending through your hand if that helps you focus. So begin to move your hand or your attention fibers through the room, but do so slowly. And get a sense that wherever you place your hand, wherever your attention has extended to, that you have some dominion over that space. So if you reach out in front of you, you have a sense that you, with your consciousness, can define that space. You can claim the space as your own. You can choose the vibrations or the feelings that you want in that space. So as we talk about this and as you explore that, notice what happens when you move your hand or your attention fibers anywhere in your immediate space Wherever you sweep your attention fibers, get a sense that where your attention is, you can choose the consciousness in that space. Choose the consciousness in that space. Mm Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. That's definitely working. It's actually cleaning up your energy fields, so that is nice. Mm Mm-hmm. Very good. Let me just look at your field here. Everybody got a brighter aura. Okay. So let's just recap some of the things that we've been doing since we started. Let's just see how quickly and easily we can do these things. So you were sweeping with your consciousness through your body. So you were letting your consciousness sweep from the top of your head all the way down to your toes. And sweeping through the body is, frankly, as easy as just sweeping your hand through the room. So you establish that your consciousness 
can sweep through wherever you want it to be. And then we were slowing down time by having a clock and imagining that the second hand was moving very slowly. And you notice what happened with that. And right now, we were sweeping with your hand or with your attention fibers, as we might call your attention, when it extends from your body and sweeps through the room. Okay. Now, let's combine all these things. And what we are really learning to do here is to be more conscious with our consciousness, you might say. We are learning to be more present in our body, and we are learning that there is a rich world of attention in whatever space we happen to inhabit. And we can choose to have a fuller, richer, deeper, more multidimensional experience in that space. Now, tune into the clock and imagine that the clock is moving one second forward. And then, with your awareness, move the second hand back one second. And then live that second over again. Good. And by the way, whatever spontaneous experience you have when you do that, that is the correct experience. This is a very subjective thing. This is not a right and wrong test. This is what you experience. This is your own rich experience. So once again, the second hand is allowed to move forward, but then move it back and just notice what it feels like in your body and mind as you relive that second again. Just let yourself do that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Very nice. I'm noticing that there's a shimmering quality that everybody has in their body and their aura as if you are more super alive and there is a sense that there is more vivid presence in reality in your consciousness and even in your physical body. Now, let's take this even deeper. Tune in to one physical object in your immediate environment any mundane thing, it could be a glass of water, a lamp, table, clock, pencil, anything. Just look at something. Imagine that you are slowing down the second hand of a clock. And notice what happens between you and that physical object that you are encountering right now when time slows down. And if you like... Move the second hand backwards a little bit so you can re-experience time and do that several times if you like, several repetitions of moving the second hand backwards a few moments so you could re-experience and notice what happens to that physical object every time you do that. Now, this is not going to be a radical shift. It is a subtle shift but that is what we are experiencing tonight. It's a subtle shift where something changes in your awareness such that you can tap into things more fully and more deeply. It's almost as if it gives you a nicer experience, a more multidimensional experience, deeper concept of what is really happening with you and what is really happening with, in this case, this physical object that you are encountering right now. Now, remember when you were sweeping through your body with your consciousness. So imagine that your attention, your fibers of attention, if you like, are extending from your body. Those fibers of attention are sweeping gently through that physical object. And when time is slower and you are sensing moving your awareness through that object, you have the capacity to tune into that object at a much deeper level. Fascinating question just came up. 
what do you do if you do the exercise that we just did in which we were slowing down time and moving the second hand backward? What if the object that you were tuning into starts to seem wobbly and what if that gives you an uneasy feeling or feeling of concern that something might not be right? Now, of course, given the consensus reality world that we all live in, where we have mass consciousness agreement about what's real and what isn't, this would naturally seem to be a rather strange state of affairs. But here's the funny thing. What you just experienced was a deeper, truer reality. That wobbliness, that is the universe as it really is. And this is the funny thing, and it's one of those things that you will simply have to accept that you had the experience, but most people would not really understand what you were talking about. The wobbliness is characteristic of everything in the universe because everything is made of vibrations. You were experiencing the true nature of that vibratory object. And so what that means is the so-called normal reality where that object seems to be frozen in time and space, that's an altered state of consciousness. Now, don't worry. If you learn these techniques, you can join the consensus reality that mass consciousness agrees to easily enough because everybody's holding the belief that everything's solid and frozen. So it'll be that, and you'll sense that if you want to you now have the option that you can tune into the world of vibrations. Now, regarding the aspect of the question, what do you do if you start to feel strange? The strangeness is because you are unfamiliar. That's all it is. It's like going to a foreign country. At first it seems strange, then you get used to it, and then you feel at home there. So... When you get familiar with the wobble, with the vibration of so-called physical objects, after a while, you start to feel at home there because you recognize that the wobble indicates to you, hey, I'm sensing the vibrations. That means I'm in the universe. I'm in the real universe, the world of vibrations. So it becomes quite enjoyable. Now, if at any time you are tuning into the world as it is, the deeper world of vibrations, and you really are wanting something more stable, you want something more familiar, simply let your eyes move about the room, look at the physical objects, and look at their surface. When you look at the surface of something, it immediately activates your left brain, your logical mind, you look at the surface of a table, you look at the surface of a person's skin, you look at the surface of a telephone or a chair or a window. And looking at all those surfaces immediately pulls you out of that vibratory perception and puts you into the world of things and objects, so-called normal consciousness. So anytime you need to do that, just do that. Okay. We are going to do some affirmations for the concerns that are coming up for a certain level of mind. We could call it the ego. And it's almost as if tuning into the world of vibrations is bringing up in a number of people. It's almost like a concern at the ego level that says, well, once you tap into the world of vibrations, then what will my purpose be? Because... I will be a vibration and I will be amidst a world of vibrations and my ego might lose control. So talk to your rational mind, talk to your ego right now and say these affirmations. I am safe as I become more conscious. I am safe as I become more conscious. And as you think about those words and their meaning, tune into your physical body and get a sense that even though you are discovering that you are made of vibrations, you know that you exist as a physical being and you know that you exist within your skin. And so say the words, it is safe for me to expand my consciousness and remain grounded. 
it is safe for me to expand my consciousness and remain grounded. Get a sense that you can look at your skin. Look at the palm of your hand. Look at the back of your hand. See that even though you are made of moving vibrations, even though you are streaming with consciousness like a river that's alive, that living river exists within the boundary of your skin. Now, the living river exists in your aura also. But the fact is, anytime you need to be grounded, just look at your skin and get a sense that you do have a boundary and realize that the vibrations always were and always shall be, but you do have a boundary, you are safe, you are grounded. Okay. Now, that released a lot of stale energy. So, if you would, just use your imagination, use your energy hands, lift stagnant energy that released from these exercises, lift it out of your aura, release it into light, or release it into the center of the earth. Lift it out of the room that you are in. Just use your imagination. Trust your imagination. Lift the stagnant energy out of the room and release it into light. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. That was excellent. Now, a question just came up. What do you do if you are sensing that world of pure vibrations and there's a sense of vertigo or dizziness or nausea or anything like that. Let's understand what's happening. We all have a rational mind, and our rational mind has a very important purpose. Its purpose is to take care of the details that are necessary for being in this world on this physical plane. So, not to judge the rational mind. It has its purpose. However, it sometimes doesn't know what to do if the rules that are part of consensus reality, mass consciousness reality, seem to be changing. You can easily understand how it would express its concerns in the best way that it can. And so it might say, oh, I feel funny, I feel unusual, I don't feel right. It is feeling something that it cannot easily contain. Now, what I'm about to say will explain a lot about metaphysics and will help you in your spiritual path in everything you do. When you are opening up to consciousness, you always have the flexibility to stay grounded in your body. But your ego doesn't know that. Your ego does not understand this. And so your ego or rational mind is looking at this world of vibrations and feeling the river flowing through you. And its first thought is, oh my God, I am disappearing. But no, you're not disappearing. Although, of course, certain limiting parts of the ego might be melting away. But your true healthy ego is always going to be there. You have a true healthy ego and you have the limiting negative ego. Now, the limiting negative ego wants to keep you limited because then it can be in control. And so one of the first things it's going to do when you start to become unlimited is it will rear its head and it will express its fears. So about those symptoms of vertigo or nausea, if vertigo or nausea seem to be happening and you get that once you start doing an exercise, breathe into the area of the symptom. You breathe into the symptom, whatever it is, because that way you are not resisting the symptom. Now, the funny thing is the symptom itself is an expression of resistance. So when people say, oh, I can't stand that I'm doing a meditation and I'm having this feeling come up. Well, now you're resisting the resistance. And so it creates this loop of resistance, which is no fun at all. So the solution, you breathe into it, you love it, you be present with it, and you say an affirmation. It's not enough to only do an affirmation because then you're just in your head. But you breathe into the part of the body going through whatever it's going through. And you affirm, I am safe even when I feel this. I am safe even when I feel this symptom. I am safe even though I feel flowing energy. 
I'm safe even though I feel flowing energy. So the negative ego thought that it could be in control by keeping you so busy in your daily life that you did not get into these subtleties. And so now it's starting to recognize that the true self is showing up. And the true self is saying, I want to experience the depth that I really am. I want to have a fuller experience of each moment. What we are going to do is to tune into the room, tune into the room that you are in. Get a sense that with your attention fibers, you can sweep anywhere in that room. And sweeping, it's just like moving your hand slowly through the room. But you can reach with your attention fibers even further than your hand can reach. And get a sense that as you sweep, time slows down and you experience the depth and the richness of wherever you place your hand. Nice. Okay. Now, let's use that skill, and we're going to extend it in a fascinating way into time itself. Now, get a sense that the span of time that constitutes today, today's span of time, Get a sense that with your attention fibers or with your energy hand, you can sweep through today. Now, I know that's a somewhat abstract thing to request you to do. Just imagine, just pretend from the first rays of light in the morning, from the first rays of light in the morning, from that point, sweep through the day with your energy fibers extending energy from your body. It's like extending a hand from your body made of light and you are sweeping through today. This is giving you a sense of dominion over something that ordinarily seems to just happen to you. Time seems to happen to you. But now it's as if time exists as a 3D reality. It's really there. You can really feel it and you can sweep through it. Mm -hmm. And get a sense that wherever you put your hand in that span of today's time, you have more presence. You have more of you. You have more choice. You have more dominion. And if there's any little glitch in today, either something that you consciously were bothered by or you just notice a glitch in time when you sweep through today, right now. Just sweep your hand through there and slow down time because maybe that glitch is because you were overloaded or maybe you were moving too quickly. So get a sense that your attention fibers are sweeping through that point in your day and soothing whatever needs to be soothed at that point in time today. So let yourself explore that. And as you do that, get a sense that you are moving with ease and grace. Your movements are slow and deliberate. Now, slow can be beautiful. The slow we're talking about here is not tired or draggy. It's positive feels comfortable. Maybe a better word would be elegant. You can have an elegant sweeping through today with your attention. As easily as your attention sweeps through your body, as easily as he swept through a physical object, as easily as he swept through the room, you sweep through today. Now, you might wonder, what do you do if you find that you are in resistance to something that happened? It perturbs you, you seem stuck on it. This is a very counterintuitive thing because you would think that if you could blip over it, you could just forget it. But let's turn that on its head. Let's do the reverse of what you would want to do. 
if something bothered you today, slow down time. Now, slowing it down lets you reacquaint yourself with those moments, but with new clarity. Because when you slow down time, your brain is more focused and clear. Your body's more alive. You are re-experiencing, but in a completely new way. You are not simply dragging yourself through a bad experience. You are re-experiencing. You are changing reality by changing your rapport with time. Now, today might have been a really nice day, so just pick any point in the day and slow down time and sweep through that point in time. And you could even imagine a timeline and the timeline could represent today. And you could sweep back and forth with your hand or with your attention fibers. Sweep back and forth for a certain brief moment. It could be any old moment. It could be a moment when you were standing at the corner waiting for the traffic light to change. It could be a moment when you were about to make a phone call. It could be anything. Just move back and forth in time, a few seconds forward, a few seconds back, and notice what starts to happen to your body. Notice what starts to happen to your breathing. Mm Mm-hmm. Nice. Now, I notice as you do that, you are releasing a lot of stagnant energy. So lift the stagnant energy out of your aura and release it into light. Lift the stagnant energy out of the room, release it into light, or you can always release stagnant energy into the center of the earth if you like as well. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay. You look bright. Now, I sense a question coming up from the linear mind. This is an important question. It is, what happens if in doing such an exercise where we are playing with time in this manner, what if there is some kind of loss of awareness about rational time or a loss of rational ability to interact with time? The answer to that is consensus reality keeps everything pretty stable. And you do have a rational mind and it is there for a good reason. Your rational mind will always keep things stable. We had a question come up. What happens if, as a result of working with time in this manner, the stagnant energy that's trying to release from the body gets stuck in the legs and doesn't seem to be able to drain out of the feet? Now, it would be nice to let yourself really honor how powerful these transformative techniques are And be really kind with yourself when your ego and your body are trying to make sense of something that they have not experienced before. So do realize that when you perceive time in a new way and when you start to perceive the richness of each moment at a deeper level, it's going to let accumulated layers of tension start to release. And if they start to release more quickly than your body knows what to do with the shift, it will sometimes feel tight. What you do, if you're doing a process that is putting you in touch with something deeper, but you're starting to feel tension, you breathe into the tension and you acknowledge that the energy is not releasing. And it's probably not releasing easily because there are several layers of resistance, possibly all fighting each other. One of the nicest things you can do for yourself when you're not able to release something, is to just embrace yourself and say, I love myself even when I am in resistance. And just for fun, it's always a good thing to practice. Tune into yourself right now and just imagine embracing yourself and say, I love myself even when, and then state whatever the limitation might be, And when you've done that several times, the energy actually starts to flow. Also, when you want to release something, if you get resistance, use a gentle phrase 
such as, I permit this energy to flow and release in its own way. I permit this energy to release and flow in its own way. Notice that you are not demanding anything. You are not forcing anything. Okay. Question just came up. What happens if you get a liking to this slow experience? And what if you somehow get lost in it and you somehow get out of touch with consensus reality? This is one of those things that is actually coming from the ego because the fact is you're not going to disappear into anything because you do have daily responsibilities and you do have a body. And if you're taking care of yourself and eating right and exercising, you have a fairly vital sense of time and reality as most people experience it. And your body has that sense of, okay, let's wake up. I have things to do today. The part of the mind that is saying, oh, you might disappear into slowness and float away and you wouldn't know how to talk to people. That is simply not going to happen. That is a fear from the ego because the ego wants you to stay tight and nervous so that it can keep playing its own little games that it seems to like. So, not to worry. And by the way, if you tune into what we did, if you tune into how we were slowing down the second half of the clock, well, if for any reason you really needed to do this, just imagine the clock moving more quickly. Now, actually, you probably won't have to do that. And I want to do a little exercise that will help you recognize that even amidst what we are calling slower time, you are still perfectly alert. You are still focused and vital and on the ball and able to do whatever you want to do. So tune into that clock. You could either look at a clock to help you visualize or simply imagine one in your mind. Imagine that with your attention fibers, you reach out and you can contact the second hand of the clock and get a sense that the clock belongs to you. And you can move the second hand any way that feels appropriate to you. And just to prove that you can do it, you can move it fast, you can move it slow. Also, realize that the power in that technique of moving it back a little bit and then re-experiencing the moments, think about what that means. That means that you can live more fully because something that you experienced the first time, maybe you only had a certain attentiveness to detail. Maybe you only experienced a certain richness of feelings and experience. When you do it the second time and the third time and so on, it's almost as if you see, feel, hear, touch, taste details that you did not experience before. Now that is the power of slow. That is where you start to have, as we were speaking about at the very beginning, the slow food movement. The idea that cooking food slowly makes it taste better. Eating food slowly is a more beautiful experience in terms of taste and sight and smell, in terms of how your heart and mind feel. It's a deeper experience. Many times people are so pent up that they think, I feel kind of nervous and I know that I'm nervous. I don't know what to do. Playing with time in the way that we are playing with it tonight starts to give you a sense that there are techniques that you can use so that you can really work with this system of time in a more beautiful and precise way. And you can really start to have a fuller, richer life, more beautiful reality moment to moment to moment. Now, Let's do this for what we might call therapeutic purposes. Tune into any aspect of your life that's perhaps not going the way you would want. And just tune into yourself. Imagine that you were looking at an image of you and imagine that you could look at yourself in that less effective state and imagine a clock. Just move the clock back 
move it back a few minutes or a few seconds. And then re-experience. Now remember, you're looking at yourself. So if it's a bad experience, I don't want you to sense the intensity of that in your body. Just observe the image of yourself going through that experience so that you feel safe and centered. Now, move the clock back and then move it forward and move the clock back and then move it forward. And this is starting to shift many different things on a very subtle level. And it's making it so that you are no longer stuck in time. You are going to re-experience those moments and in re-experiencing them, something inevitably changes. And that's the wonderful thing about this little technique here. When you move the clock back a few seconds, then somehow a situation where you felt clumsy, you're no longer that clumsy. Or if you were scared, you're no longer that scared. Or if you were confused or sad or angry, whatever it was, each time you move the clock back and then you re-experience that, something becomes smoother. Now, one of the reasons might be that the first time you experienced whatever that unfortunate feeling was, you were overwhelmed. But guess what happens when you move the clock back a few seconds and then you re-experience? It's no longer overwhelming because you are now familiar with it. And so what do you think happens when you have done five, six, seven or more repetitions of those same few seconds? It gets familiar almost to the extent that you get bored with whatever perturbed you and you start to notice details and those details could be interesting useful details you might recognize hey wait a minute maybe I was having that problem because I was not relaxed in my body maybe I was not breathing you start to notice whatever intuitive insights you need to get and so that could really change your life because things that seem to be stuck in time no longer are. Situations that seem to be ineffective are now seen as things that were only temporarily ineffective. Let's try that with one more situation. Pick some aspect of your reality where you feel less at ease or less confident. And simply imagine an image of yourself at a safe distance and imagine a clock. You are going to move second hand back a little bit. Just relax and smile and send some loving energy to that image of yourself. And let that image of yourself know that you are okay. And if you're wondering if you can do this on behalf of of a loved one, the answer is yes, of course. Or on behalf of a client or friend or co-worker, yes, of course. And if you like, you can always ask their higher self for permission. So whatever the issue is, look at the image, look at the situation, just move the clock back a little bit, and then let the clock move forward slowly because that lets you relax into the moment and there's something amazing that happens when the clock is moving more slowly than what we call normal. You have a lot more psychic insight. And that, by the way, is one of the reasons that some people were having a buzzy feeling. Other people had some uncomfortable feelings. You were feeling multidimensionally much more deeper than normal. But when you become more familiar with these deeper ways of sensing, you become familiar with that and it becomes easy and even enjoyable and comfortable. So you move the clock back and then move it forward. Now, tune into any part of the body that has tension and see that image of your body at a distance and move the clock back a few seconds and then move it forward and at your own pace keep moving the clock back and then forward regarding that particular part of the body. And what starts to happen is that you free up whatever has been stuck there. 
you might not even know exactly what you're doing. You're just doing an experiment with time. But this experiment with time is making you more conscious in a deep, multi-sensory way. And it's bringing more intelligence. It's bringing more consciousness to that part of the body. And so without your even consciously knowing exactly why it works, something wonderful is happening and there's a beautiful, smooth, easy flow that's starting to flow through your body. We're getting ready to do a concluding meditation for the evening. And so what we're going to do is tune into the soul. Now, anytime you tune into the soul, let yourself use your imagination. And if it seems as if you are pretending, you have permission to pretend because that is the royal road to accessing deeper consciousness through imagination. So imagine the light of your soul. Let it shine forth from within you and let it shine all around you. You might imagine it as a light, but you might imagine your soul as warmth and you might just imagine it as presence or a vibration that you intuitively sense is there or it might be a sound a deep sound so tune in and as you sense your soul get a sense that your soul has always been and shall always be and get a sense as you tune into that soul that you can experience the depth of your soul within this precise moment of time and now with your attention move the second hand back a little bit so here's the meditation you move the second hand back and you experience the presence of your eternal soul over the next few moments and then you move the second hand back again and yet again you experience your soul and now do this at your own pace good moving the second hand a few seconds back re-experiencing those moments each time you tune into your soul and I have a good sense that each time you do this you will be able to sense with greater depth and deeper sense of reality something about your soul that you did not know before and all of this because you let yourself experience the power of slow the power of slowness you let yourself experience time in a new way to let you discover the essential nature of this vibratory universe and hence the essential nature of the divine eternal you before we conclude any last minute questions for the evening we just had a question come up is it possibly too much for some people who have had traumatic experiences is it too much for those people to re-experience using these slow motion techniques so let's be really clear if something feels as if it would be too much to handle do not go there very simple if you do want to explore doing some healing using time put the image of yourself in that difficult point in time at a distance do not re-experience it in your body now that would be rather difficult and could be re-traumatizing you put the image of yourself at a distance so that you feel safe and just re-experience or let the image rather re-experience a brief moment in time and realize that you have control over the clock see this is the beauty of that you have control over the clock so that you can move anywhere in future classes we are going to be doing much more extensive work with time shifting for the purpose of healing but for the moment just know that you have flexibility and you can shift the clock and of course you have the ability with your attention to do energy balancing you can lift stagnant energy or scared energy out of that image of yourself so do be creative 
Interesting question just came up. Is it possible that this is what autistic children are experiencing all the time? Now, the truth of that is only they know, but we can guess. They are stuck in these techniques. They are not consciously doing these techniques. Now, consciously doing something makes all the difference in the world because you could take any normal experience. If you get stuck in a normal experience, it's no longer healthy. It's no longer appropriate. For example, eating healthy food in appropriate quantities. If you have control over that, you're fine. If for some reason a person is eating even healthy food but in very unhealthy quantities because they are not conscious with their process of eating and chewing and digesting, that becomes a problem. To answer the fears that might come up in some people when they think, wow, are we doing a technique that puts us into a disturbed state? No, the opposite is true. This puts you into the state of deeper reality assuming that you are consciously using it. But the assumption we always have with any process is that you are consciously using it. And with that, I want to say thank you for a multidimensional class. Thank you for experiencing something that's so deep and so very much needed in this world today. That was beautiful. You are wonderful and blessed. And I thank you, I thank you, I thank you.